Hi, Professor Orlando. This is Rebecca Krauss, and I'm going to do my first podcast ever in my life. Um, it is going to be on Henry James's Daisy Miller, and I will read a passage. The theme I'm going to focus on in Daisy Miller is going to be the theme of the American versus the European and the view that the European has on the American. The first passage I'm going to read is from page 27 to 28 after Winterbourne and Daisy meet. Winterbourne was a man of imagination and, as our ancestors used to say, of sensibility. As he looked at her dress and, on the great staircase, her little rapid, confiding step, he felt as if there were something romantic going forward. He could have believed he was going to elope with her. He passed out with her among the all the idle people that were assembled there. They were all looking at her very hard. She had begun to chatter as soon as she joined him. Winterbourne's preference had been that they should be conveyed to Shillon in a carriage, but she expressed a lively wish to go in the little steamer. She declared that she had a passion for steamboats. There was always such a lovely breeze upon the water, and you saw such lots of people. The sail was not long, but Winterbourne's companion found time to say a great many things. To the young man himself, their little excursion was so much of an escapade, an adventure, that, even allowing for her habitual sense of freedom, he had some expectation of seeing her regarded as the same way. But it must be confessed that this particular, he was disappointed. Daisy Miller was extremely animated. She was in charming spirits, but she was apparently not at all excited. She was not fluttered. She avoided neither his eyes nor those of anyone else. She blushed neither when she looked at him nor when she saw that people were looking at her. People continued to look at her a great deal, and Winterbourne took much satisfaction in his pretty companion's distinguished air. He had been a little afraid that she would talk loud, laugh over much, and even perhaps desire to move about the boat a good deal but he quite forgot his fears and sat smiling with his eyes upon her face while without moving from her place she just delivered herself of a great number of original reflections it was the most charming garrulity he had ever heard he had assented to the idea that she was a common but was she so after all or was he simply just getting used to her communists? Her conversation was chiefly of what metaphysicians term the objective cast, but every now and then it took the subjective turn. So firstly, I would like to say that um, I definitely could pick out some things that I noticed in this little book that reflected my own experiences when I studied abroad in the Czech Republic, Prague, this past semester of my junior year. And I know we talked about it a little in class, like in the beginning, how the perception that Europeans have Americans. Firstly, it's interesting that Winterbourne and Daisy Miller are both from America. However, Winterbourne has been in um, Europe for such a long time that he has changed his views and even doesn't really know how American girls act anymore. Now, I remember in one part of the this little sh- book that Winterbourne said, or maybe the narrator said that he had been become disinhabited with the American tone or something to that nature, that he just doesn't know how Americans should act anymore. Like, maybe... This is how the girls of America act now. He just doesn't know because he hasn't been there for such a long time. And when I was in the Czech Republic, I feel personally I wasn't a typical American there. Um, I lived with a host family who had their own stereotypes about Americans. I think it was true that some Americans just like these college kids I would see out at nighttime. And they were so loud and just on the trams and talking really loud and obnoxious and Prague in the Czech Republic Czech people aren't very friendly at first once you get to know them they are very compassionate they'll you know take you into their house feed you they're so nice but that's once you get to know them and that's why I think when you're walking down the street in Prague or if you're on the metro like the subway they won't necessarily smile at you 
And it's funny because on the metro, everyone was just sitting there staring at each other, coming home from work or maybe reading a book, but like no one talks. And everyone just stares at each other. And it's pretty funny because when you walk on, you just get hit with the silence and then you kind of feel awkward talking. So I think when you do speak, especially if you don't speak their language, they pick you out of the crowd immediately. Well, I commuted every day to school for a while, but when I commuted, I would, you know, travel alone. And I do have fair complexion, fair hair, like light hair and light eyes. And I feel like I definitely looked like a Czech person, you know. I They dress in jeans and boots. And so I feel like by the look of me, without if I didn't say a word and I was by myself, I would look like a Czech person. However, there were other people from America, other students who were so obviously American because they had kind of this confidence about them that made them seem a little cocky almost when it might not have been the case, but when they were just flaunting their selves and they're drunk, you know, at nighttime and they're just speaking really loud, it's hard not to notice them. And that's why the Americans kind of get this stupid, like, you just come here to drink, you just want to use our facilities. And that's why, like, my host parents even just said, like, oh, you just come here to drink. And it was true that the the water was cheaper than, no, no, the beer was cheaper than water. That is a fact. I think it's important to know that Daisy Miller mentions a few times that Daisy is uncultivated and that Winterborn has just lived too long in Europe. Now, Daisy Miller, in the end, we see that she is an innocent girl and that she never really was with Giovanelli in any type of way besides just with him, you know, as friends or more than friends, but never did anything with him, which Winterborn is surprised about, that she may be uncultivated, but she just doesn't know better. My roommate Denise had something to add to this podcast after hearing me talk, and she also studied abroad in Prague, the Czech Republic, last semester. So this one time I was on the tram coming home from a nightclub, and there were some American students on the tram, and making a lot of noise, just being really obnoxious, and there was a Czech man sitting behind me, he goes, stupid Americans. So I turned around and I said to him, like, all right, they're being obnoxious right now, but they're drunk. Like, German people, when they're drunk, can be obnoxious. Czech people, when they're drunk, can be obnoxious. And you can't judge a whole race just on a couple drunk people on a tram. Well, thank you, Denise. That was very insightful to my project. I think uh, my roommate raised a good point that although Americans can be pointed out in a crowd um, for being loud or obnoxious, really any ethnicity can make a scene, just as Americans do, just as Daisy Miller did, if they just want to have a good time. Visitors entering a new country probably want to have an adventure, just as Daisy Miller wanted to have an adventure, and how Winterborn said being with Daisy was like an adventure, and Daisy probably had an expectation about the kind of time she wanted to have in this new country, about, you know, studying abroad, and I think it was good that Daisy didn't care what people thought, and I think as long as she's not harming anyone, she should do what she wants, and... I mean, ultimately, it proved to kill her, which was really sad on her part. And I think it's interesting how Henry James chose to kill Daisy at the end because, you know, he could have just made her go back to America, but he chose to kill her. So maybe he was trying to make a greater statement saying, um, maybe telling people that, look what's going to happen if you don't respect other people's society or act like a lady. Thank you very, thank you very much for listening to my podcast, and I want to do another one in the future. Hopefully it will be organized and informational and have a great day.